YouTube. Once again, it's Case Do the Goat for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And I'm going to give you today my takeaways from Auburn's last five games. If you think about it, Auburn went three and two in the last five games. Of course, surrendering uh, victories to Alabama and Georgia. But there was a lot of positive insight when you look at those particular games. Hope you all enjoy this video, War Eagle. What's going on, YouTube? Once again, it is Casey the Goat for Vernon Speak Sports. We're talking Auburn football like none other here on YouTube. And we want to go ahead and get the comment section active here on a beautiful Thursday morning. Man, it is hot in the Deep South, but it is getting very close to the college football season. The Avercare Classic is drawing nigh. Auburn will take on the Pac-12 hopeful Oregon in the Avercare Classic, but I still have a lot of thoughts on the 2018 season. Here are my takeaways from the last five games of the season. Now, if we look at this, Auburn began a late stretch. Now, we do know about the abysmal stretch basically between Mississippi State and Alabama, but there were some positive things to gain during that time. You talk about the Texas A&M game and the interception by Noah Igbenogany really igniting the Auburn Tigers down the stretch. Auburn went on to win that game against Texas A&M, keeping A&M from having a 10-win season, winning that game going into Georgia. Now, if we look at this Auburn, as much as we would like to think that things were falling apart, which in a roundabout way they were, Auburn goes into the Georgia game ranked number 24. Now, when we look at the Georgia game, we look at the first half, Auburn, you know, uh, of course, <clears throat> if you're about three beers in and a couple of tequila shots in and you're full off of your Rotel dip from your tailgate party, you might not have been able to see this. Also, big shout out to all of the Auburn guys out there who had to replace their flat screen TVs because they damaged them because of being frustrated by how the Auburn Tigers were playing. Hey, you got to get that thing fixed because the Avercare Classic is coming. You got to have that flat screen TV and you have to have your beer mugs ready for that particular game. Now, when I think about the Georgia game, for example, for the first time in my honest opinion, all year, although Auburn did not win that particular game, I was very intrigued by the adjustments that I saw. Auburn began to have a lot more identity as far as offense goes, moved the ball relatively well, did not take advantage, of course, of all of the opportunities. But when you look at that particular game, I look at a couple of different plays. First, I look at the targeting penalty by Nick Cole that actually ended the momentum swing that Auburn had in that game. OK, it is what it is. Also, a very positive is that Auburn only allowed Georgia seven points in the second half of that particular game. Also, a great interception by Jamel Dean, while the score was still only 20 to 10, actually gave Auburn some opportunity to make that a ball game. Of course, the outcome was 27 to 10, but if you're an Auburn fan, if you looked at Auburn throughout the 2018 season, you just didn't see a lot of solidarity. You didn't see a lot of, you know, outcomes that didn't leave you scratching your head like what am I looking at like what is this offense what is going on okay but when you look at the late stretch things started to actually make more sense for the Auburn Tigers so late in that game Auburn is only down 20 to 10 of course um, DeAndre Swift had the big run after the Auburn defense was gassed of course uh, Georgia goes on to win that game 27 to 10. Georgia actually, in my honest opinion, was playing their best football during that portion of the season. And the second half against Auburn solidified the fact that Georgia was on their way to being a perennial powerhouse in the SEC as they solidified that. And of course, Georgia goes on to the SEC championship, all but dominating Alabama. A few mistakes here and there. Um, I think the, uh, the, the play call of Justin Fields in the SEC championship. I probably wouldn't have called that play, but hey, that's a judgment call. Big shout out to the Georgia Bulldogs. Can you hunker down one 
more time. So either way, when I think about the Auburn Tigers, though, a lot of positivity, although, you know, Auburn uh, lost that particular game. It was the first game, in my opinion, that Auburn could actually Auburn fans could actually look at a game and, OK, we lost the game. But I saw a lot of things in this that actually made sense. War Eagle. Now you go to the Liberty game, very solid offensively. Now, if you talk about games that Auburn played, even against menial opponents, we look back at the Alabama State game, we look at the um, uh, Southern Miss game, and also, you know, a couple of games that Auburn should have just straight dominated. When you look at those games offensive, oh, Arkansas, that's the one I'm thinking about, did not dominate those games in the fashion that you would expect a Power 5 SEC championship hopeful to do, but they did so against Liberty, were very, very solid offensively, very, very solid defensively, left a po lot of positive vibes to where, okay, when you go into the Alabama game, now, no, you know, sane Auburn fan going into the Auburn game expected Auburn to win that game, okay? Now, if you say you expected Auburn to beat Alabama, you probably are not looking within the right lenses. But when you talk about the first half of the Alabama game, you're talking about several three and outs. Who makes Alabama go three and out throughout the year? Not many teams. Auburn did so. Also, Auburn's play calling offensively in the first half against Alabama was absolutely phenomenal. Now, you take away, I think every Auburn fan can remember what they were doing, can remember where they were, probably two or three beers in when Sean Shivers, see, this is when we really knew that Sean Shivers had, I mean, he's fast, right? Sean Shivers, in a very well-designed play, really exposed Alabama's defense. Very good blocking up front, uh, very well-designed play. Yeah, you can argue. Yeah, Sal Canella may have held on that play, but, I mean, it is what it is, a great play. The bad part about this particular play is, one, it did not count. If you, you count that touchdown for the Auburn Tigers against Alabama, I'm not saying that Auburn would have won the game, but it would have definitely shifted momentum. But even still, Auburn only down 17-13 to in that particular game, and if you look at the late stretch of that particular game. Auburn was only down by 10 points with about three minutes left in the third quarter. And of course, that's when the onslaught of Tua Tonga Valoa and probably, you know, arguably some of the most talented receivers in SEC college football, arguably. I mean, they just had their way down the stretch, but you had to leave that game with a lot of casual optimism in the fact that Auburn played a very, very, you know, manageable game, had a great game plan. I still question Gus Malzahn's decision, decisions late in the uh, first half against Alabama. But all in all, a very respectable performance outside of allowing Alabama 21 points in the third quarter and 14 in the fourth, which led to a score of 52 to 21 which no Auburn fan would be satisfied with when you talk about the outcome, but you got to look at the little things in that game to where Auburn had legitimate chances that we did not predict that they would have had prior to the Texas A&M game. So when we look back at it, Texas A&M did provide Auburn a spark, a spark that let them know, hey, we are still a good college football team, that we still are viable in the SEC and we're going to make our presence known. And they definitely did that, at least for the first halves of the Georgia and Alabama game, War Eagle. Now, you go into the Purdue game. I actually, this is when I started to become very active with YouTube. I did a, a prediction show on the Purdue game. News came out that Gus Malzahn was going to be calling plays. I reflected back on the outcomes of Gus Malzahn calling plays, very productive, even in some of the higher tier defenses of the SEC. I predicted that game to be 37 to 19. I figured Auburn would win that game because, of course, Purdue would not know how to prepare 
based on film study that they would have access to throughout the season. But I did not predict that Auburn would have a record-breaking performance in that particular bowl game going on to beat Purdue 63 to 14. So when you really look at the late stretch of the Auburn Tigers, very positive, you know, didn't take advantage of all the opportunities, but left something to build on for the Auburn Tigers. Once again, it's Case Stu the Goat for Vernon Speak Sports. We're talking Auburn football. We're starting to kind of ease into the rest of the SEC and college football. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get this uh, comment section active. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and let's get this thing going. Avercare Classic in Arlington, Texas against the Oregon Ducks, who are Pac-12 hopefuls. Also have uh, Justin Herbert as a Heisman hopeful. Have Troy Dyer returning to anchor the defense. Once again, let's get this thing going. War Eagle.